Okay, um, time for me to introduce uh, Tim, MW0RUD. Um, we put out a call um, about six months ago for uh, a volunteer to uh, work on building a set-top box for digital ATV. Tim very no kindly put his head above the parapet and this is an example of how you can all help the BATC and bring your own skill set to, to what we need doing. Uh, and Tim uh, worked on a uh, front end to go on Heather's long mind so we get a set top box for DATV and without further ado over to Tim take it away please thank you thank you Dave so as Dave said hi I'm Tim uh, just a quick background because uh, this is one of the first things I've been doing with the ATC uh, I've been licensed since 2015 I live in Swansea so I'm currently uh, in a bit of lockdown um, I go to the Carmarthen Club, where I've been involved in uh, other projects. I've been working on things like the GB3 RP 10 gigahertz beacon. Uh, I generally end up doing the software side of projects because I uh, I do that professionally. Uh, I and I often find that uh, I spend a lot of time making things and not actually very much time using the things that I've made. So now let's talk about right. So uh, as Dave said. Uh, Noel published a spec that looks something like looks something like this um, uh, in April uh, as a suggestion of something you might want to do, um, asking for help because this might be very useful. Um, for people who didn't bring their binoculars, uh, this essentially says that they're looking for a set-top box um, <clears throat> that will be useful for people with uh, in your shack, uh, or you could use it for uh, repeaters or even portable it would work um, and would overcome some of the limitations uh, that uh, off-the-shelf set-top boxes have such as they don't work very well with low symbol rates uh, so a standard set-top box you might be able to buy will stop working uh, at about one mega symbol um, also it's a bit sensitive when it comes to codecs uh, so uh, Certain new older set top boxes won't work with newer codecs and things like that. Um, so, uh, and also in the future, your set top box uh, won't support new things as they come along. So that would be very, very nice to have. Um, use existing hardware that people might be familiar with. So you all probably uh, have something like a mini tuner for receive. Um, use your computer, and if you've got ports down, then you'll be familiar with the Raspberry Pis. Um, uh, the idea was to use uh, uh, infrared remotes that you might again already have. Um, so for example, this that I found in a box, um, but also be able to connect front panel buttons if you're going to put it in a box or something. Um, there's some existing code that I was going to be able to use, um, or they suggested that we could use. Um, the idea was you did on-screen menus, so you could do everything with the remote control. Um, again, it's 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 going to be doing it's going to do that. So use your remote control and your front panel buttons to get everything set up and working, uh, and to do your tuning. Um, so you don't have to you have a keyboard or anything like that connected. Um, uh, have an on-screen display. So you a standard set-top box off the shelf one. You'd um, you'd normally have a program bar that shows what you, what program you're watching. Um, in addition to that, it might be nice to have things like MER to help with alignment um, and other problems. Um, uh, network control, so uh, people who use uh, Q0100 satellite uh, use things like the uh, live tune. Um, it'd be nice to be able to integrate with that. Uh, so you can control, um, so you can quickly tune to signals as you see them pop up. Um, but also be able to integrate with things like the BAT, BATC streamer um, so that you can either stream from the ride receiver or stream to it. So you could watch, a, uh, if you can't receive a signal directly, but someone else is streaming it, you could view it on the receiver. Or if you're receiving and you want to share it, you'd be able to do that. Um, and then a little bit after the spec, and we, 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 when we, once I'd started working, um, the spec was slightly modified to add some scanning capability so that uh, you could have one receiver set up a set of um, 
symbol rates and be able to receive those symbol rates. Um, and you just leave it and it will, if people transmit, uh, particularly useful for repeaters. Um, so rough, rough um, timeline of how we got here. So as I said, April, Noel published that. So I thought a little, had a look at it and I looked at the foot thread on the forum. Um, there were a lot of people talking about hardware and new industry things. Um, I had a look at it and thought, well, this sounds like a software project. A lot of the hardware already exists. Um, so I started having a play around, play with port, play with the uh, Pi, have a look at what's possible. And I, uh, on the 22nd of May, you might have seen on the forum, if you've been following, I published um, some test code that had, had a menu that you could interact with. Um, I had a video playing in the background. It wasn't connected to the to a receiver or anything. It was just kind of this is kind of possible. Um, after publishing that, I started getting uh, excited emails from people going, "Oh, oh, can I have a play? Does it work?" And it's like, "No, it doesn't work yet." Um, it took me another week to get something that mostly worked, um, and then a week after that, it kind of got published. I published uh, the, the core code. Um, at which point, I'd been writing. Uh, uh, there's about 3,000 lines of code in there at that point. Um, and then Dave went away and did some work on it and did some integration. So do things like um, set it up so that you can easily make SD cards using a lot of the stuff that's the same as ports down. Um, and it took, so finalizing that took about a week and then uh, it got published. And hopefully some of you have uh, picked up one of those and of using that stuff now. So it took about a little about three months to kind of build a functional system that lets you interact um, with it. Um, ooh. Push the wrong button. Um, so yeah, in, in, that, in the intervening time, we're now up to about 5,000 lines of code of Python and mostly C um, for those who understand what that means. There's no need to understand about the technical inner details. I just thought I'd mention it. So the culprits, um, so there's a set of people working on it. So I build the core um, ride player, um, which is the core application that does most of the work. Um, but there's a few things behind the scenes. Um, Dave um, uses a lot of experience with ports down and does the uh, build system. The build system uh, turns the application that I've written into a fully functional system that starts when you turn the Pi on and gives you a configuration menu um, similar to the ports down, um, and he manages the cards. He also manages the uh, handsets. So obviously all handsets are different. So talking to this is different from talking to this. Um, so he collects those. If you've got a handset that's not in the list, you can send it, you can probably post it on the forum. There's a thread for that. Um, and Dave will add it and make it accessible. Um, he also is invaluable as the first tester or the second tester. Um, so when I write some new code, I'll send it to Dave. Uh, Dave has a play with it, points out all the silly things that don't work or tests on hardware that I don't have or signals that are not easily accessible and points out all the things that might want to be changed before we share it or says this isn't very easy to use and we make these modifications. Um, and then the other thing is Longmin. So Heather wrote Longmin. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, that is that is an invaluable tool that allowed the ride player to exist. It's the same. We have just written a very nice interface around Longmin. Um, Phil has been working uh, on a lot of the uh, mod ride specific modifications to that. So things like the symbol rate scanning required changes. Um, uh, for that, um, and also has found some uh, bugs that needed fixing. Um, and the other thing we, we've been doing is Mike has been working on some specific hardware. So uh, we, if you want to use buttons with this, then you have to have, um, you'll need some resistors and things. So there's a breakout board. Um, I'll talk about the hardware a bit more in detail in a minute. Um, there's also been some testers. Uh, always invaluable to have good testers. So the standard point out all the things that don't work or they have an even wider range of hardware. And we've had some 
we found some unusual old hardware that people have set up for things or some slightly odd variants of uh, even the new hardware that have found some bugs that we've needed to fix but also things like um, somebody reported that it wasn't working on their 4k television um, so we had to make some modifications to that so if you want to watch 4k DATV uh, you can do that so uh, let's talk about what it actually does and where we are at the moment. So let's first talk about hardware. Uh, that picture is of my development hardware, or you can put it in a box like a lot of people have. Um, uh, I certainly know that Colin and Dave have some very nice boxed examples. <coughs> um, you can use, uh, it's a Raspberry Pi, and you can use the composite output or the HDMI out. Uh, do be aware when using the HDMI out that you have to use the correct port. It's the one closest to the power connector. Um, uh, closest to the power connector. Uh, um, yeah, so as I said earlier, Dave manages a set of remotes. Uh, you can use anything if you've got something that doesn't work. Uh, there are some instructions for setting it up and how to submit your remote control. Um, please do that. We, we'd like to have a complete list. Obviously, we've got ones that we've got hold of and various people have posted theirs. Um, so the two core pieces of new hardware that we've written for this are the GPIO board, which is mostly a board of resistors. Um, and we sold about 30 of those from the shop. Um, but I believe we're still sold out on those. <coughs> um, it's, yeah, but it's called the resistance and interconnect. So if you've got an existing enclosure with buttons that you're reusing, you can just wire them straight up to that. Um, uh, the other thing that's been, that's been made is an IR and button board. It's got all the other things that you might need if you're not using an existing, um, if you're not using an existing uh, a case, you can get the button board, you can wire them together. And again, I think we sold about 40 of those. And I think those are also sold out um, last time I spoke uh, to Noel anyway. Um, I've mounted mine. You can actually mount that upside down to mount those directly together. Um, theoretically, this is the officially supported hardware, as was Dave was saying, for ports down. It may work with other things. Um, I did early development with a very old um, uh, Raspberry Pi to get the initial things, but it's not very good at doing the actual video decoding, which is why we recommend the hardware we do. Um, and having the official supported hardware makes it a lot easier for us to help you if you're having problems. Uh, ah, Noel has just said that uh, there is a, there is now 50 available of each board uh, in the shop and they're already available. So get on it before they sell out again. I hear they're very popular. <laughs> So, uh, in terms of the player itself, that, uh, people who've used it will recognize this screen. Um, it will play anything that VLC will play. Um, so that will, that's, that's all current codecs. Um, because it's dependent on VLC, uh, as future codecs become available, uh, at some point I'm sure they'll be H.266, um, we just have to wait for the VLC update and it should support that as well. Um, uh, you, the, you, this is the manual tuning mode. As you can see, you just set the frequency, the same as the symbol rate. Um, you can also set up scanning. So you just specify up to four frequencies and four symbol rates, and it will cycle through them slowly looking for a signal uh, that it can lock onto. Um, we've also got bands. Bands um, are best thought of as signal paths. So at the moment, they just hold your IF. So if you're listening to the satellite, um, they've got uh, you set your LMBIF on that, and you can set it very accurately um, for the drift on your specific uh, LNB, uh, and that means you can then reuse that for multiple for all of your Q0100 uh, signals, for example. Um, it doesn't currently support, but it is on our list of things to do. It will support the RF switch. So the idea is that it is how the signal gets from your antenna into the thing so you it will switch the rf switch as you switch bands and set the appropriate if so you just set the frequency set the band set the symbol rate and off you go and to make that even easier we, there are presets so presets are a set of those three things including you can also have a preset can contain a set of scan frequencies and symbol rates um 
so that you can, for example, I have a narrow, narrow scan uh, preset that scans QO100, the narrow band section for the narrow band symbol rates. So you can just leave it running and it will find symbols, uh, uh, signals and bring them up as they appear. Uh, you can configure the bands and the presets from the console menu. Um, I think Dave has set up 10 presets you can reconfigure. Um, advanced users can go and uh, edit the config file to make it gives you uh, more options uh, if required. Um, but yeah, the defaults are set by Dave and, uh, and are designed to be a generic set. Right, so we recently, um, there, we've been, there are general bugs in these things. Um, uh, I want to say thanks to Phil for the work he's done recently in fixing the symbol rate scanning issue we had with, um, with an unusual batch of tuners. Um, there are some other issues we've got lying around. None of them are particularly um, common or um, problematic. So there's a VLC bug, for example, um, that occasionally crashes it. Um, I seem to get that more than anybody else. I suspect it's uh, the, uh, the, um, how hard I push it during testing. Um, uh, things like if you disable the composite video and turn it on, it crashes. But uh, it's going to connect the composite video, but don't connect the HDMI. It gets confused. Um, but that would be an odd thing to do anyway. Um, we're not using the Pi hardware decode, which, uh, because as Dave mentioned, it ports down talk. Um, some signals have more trouble um, being decoded by the hardware, um, and software is just more reliable. And we found that the Pi 4 has generally enough power in its CPU decoding um, to manage most all the signals that I've uh, tried to decode. Um, so there's a master list of uh, bugs and features on the uh, on the GitHub. There's links on the forum in various places and that lists all the bugs and the upcoming features. It's generally our master list. If you find if you're fine, you've got a problem with things in software, either post it to the official list, um, the issues list on GitHub, or you can post it on the forum or send us an email um, and we'll have a look, see if we can reproduce it and uh, try and sort it out. It's a problem. Um, if you're going to do that, the only thing we ask is to kind of have a look around and see if other people are reporting it first and if we're already working on it. Um, so next thing, uh, things that are coming soon. So this is mostly code that I've already written um, that we're, we're going to, we're doing with testing on at the moment, but they're not, it's not quite ready for release. Um, some of these are probably quite popular new features. So uh, I've had a lot of requests for a mute button, um, and it's been in the it's been in the cards for a long time. But the current version has mute, and the other big feature that we are working on at the moment is the on-screen display. Because at the moment, as you may have seen, if you've used it, uh, you can bring up the menu and view it, but you can't actually um, you can't actually see what's displayed, what the MER and things like that are. Um, so we've recently been adding that. So now I'm going to do a quick demo. So this, this is the QO 100 beacon, as I'm sure you all recognize. Um, and at the moment, uh, normally you would go into your menu uh, with your remote and you'd push select. And now you, now you can get a signal. Uh, it tells you what it is, tells you what preset you're tuned to and gives you your MER. And it will get automatically disappears after a short amount of time. Um, so normally when you're in your menu, this is very familiar. So uh, yeah, you push, you push select, you get the, you get the MER. You can also use the, uh, when that disappears, there was also a button on the GPIO. And when you hold the button down, one second, right, it disappears. So when you hold the button down, uh, it appears. This would be a very useful uh, interface for uh, repeaters. So repeater controls can turn this on and off uh, based on their own parameters. You let go of the button, it disappears. Uh, also, as signals come and go, so if I disconnect the coax, um, it disappears. As I reconnect it, it automatically brings up uh, the signal bar. So again, if you've got it, for example, on scan, uh, on a beacon, or on the, on the satellite or somewhere, uh, when it locks on, it will bring it up and it will show you the signal parameters. Um, the uh, uh, so yeah, I, was, I had it playing yesterday, just in the background, and just it would just be scanning. Someone would bring up a signal, um, and then it would um, 
it would bring it up, it would show me who it was, show me the MER. Um, it will also, uh, if you can lock onto a signal but can't quite play it, you'll still get the bar and the MER display. So if you're um, automatically show up. Uh, there's a set of timers and you can configure all that. Um, hopefully, we're, um, hopefully through the console menu, some of this stuff will be adjustable. Certainly in the, uh, for advanced users in the um, config file, um, we're still working out exactly what uh, is going to get integrated in the, um, uh, in the console menu. Uh, these are some of the things that are happening between software writing. So, uh, right, let's go back to the slides. So, this is my rough design document. So, uh, as you can see, there's a few more things to add to this. Um, we'll probably do a release before all of these are available. Um, so we want to do some kind of RF power um, stuff and the constellation also telling you your current um, demodulation uh, and the information about what kind of codecs people are using. Um, and potentially some uh, little uh, progress bars almost, um, signal level bars. Um, so it's a bit easier to see when you're tuning up a signal. Um, we've decided that once we've got this working and released, then SD cards will be coming into the shop. Um, so that for people who don't want to set up their own SD cards, you can just buy one, put it straight into a Pi, and it will just work. Um, so that that will be coming uh, very soon. We've we've just, uh, some of this stuff has only finished this week. So it's uh, we've got a bunch of testing to do, and uh, Dave's got some integration to do. Um, after that, the next thing to come along are, are we've got a set of features that I'll start working on next. On-screen configuration is the major one. Um, the idea is to make Dave obsolete uh, so that you don't have to go and use the um, go and log in because at the moment the console menu you have to SSH in and go and edit it. We'd love to be able to do that from using the remote controls or the front panel buttons. Um, that's quite a major feature, so we'll probably do some smaller features alongside it. Um, for example, uh, the network control, again, a very popularly requested feature. That's quite high on the list. It shouldn't be too difficult, hopefully, so that people can use the live tune. Um, but yeah, this, I've got various things, a lot of them on the list on the GitHub. Um, uh, auto set up handsets would be nice so that people can, uh, with an unknown handset that's not in configured, can just push buttons. You first start it up and it says, if you've got a if you've got a remote control, please press please press any button, and then it will try and work out what what handset you have as you press buttons. So it will just be automatic. You just connect it up, and it just works. Um, fine tune LO is another useful thing. So you can use a QO100 beacon, for example, to fine tune the LO automatically on your and track the 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 offset on your LNB. Um, and recording recording is uh, something that I've been doing. Um, and recording would uh, record the, uh, um, the, the TS and allow you to um, uh, and separate it automatically as signals change because various things don't like it if your codec, for example, changes uh, mid TS if you're trying to re encode this. Um, we we'll obviously want to add more stability and things like um, people have asked for the ability to use both HDMI ports. There's various other things that people would like, but this is kind of the rough list of ideas that are that are things we want to work on next. Um, but what 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 actually comes next depends on how easy they turn out to be, what people ask for particularly, um, and things like that. So if you have uh, if lots of people ask for a specific feature, we're more likely to do that sooner um, and prioritize it. And then of course, there's always um, uh, silly features, new fe features that are complicated or we haven't really done very things, but might be nice to have. Um, BATC stream support, I've not had a huge amount of requests for it, but it is in the original spec, so it will arrive eventually. Um, these are, these, this is not in any kind of order. These are just kind of things I looked on the list and thought might be quite interesting. Um, additional hardware support. Um, might hear some more about that later um, or different versions of Pi or whatever. Um, might be nice to add some of those. Um, people have asked for things like adjusting the not locked screen to show a slideshow that might be useful for repeaters. 
Um, I'm a bit wary to do some of these things, which is why they're not a priority. Um, I don't really want to step on the toes of re existing repeater controls and things like that. Um, uh, multiple uh, thing mentioned in the original spec that might be nice in the future. Um, be able to do multi channels on a thing from a carrier. There's a fair amount of work involved in extracting that data and building an interface to let people easily scroll through it. Um, HDIC, which is the thing that lets you your TV control your set-top box. It might be cool to um, support that, but I don't know how easy that is. I know that theoretically the Pi can do it, but I don't. it might be quite a, a nightmare, a bit like the remotes. Um, that's what Dave has warned me. Um, uh, the other thing would be potentially some QO100 um, specific features, like potentially a chat overview or the spectrum on the screen. Um, but we're always open to new suggestions to put on this list of things that might be nice when we get there. Um, uh, yeah, things that might be nice when we get there. Um, oh, I don't have a huge amount of time left by the look of it, but maybe um, if there are some any particular priority questions, that might be uh, now. But there's also the breakout session later for if anyone has any particular um, uh, if anyone wants to discuss anything, has any ideas, we'd love to hear ideas or priorities on any ideas that we've mentioned um, and things like that so that we know kind of what we want to work on next. Um, just general thanks again to the people who've been helping, particularly Dave, who has been an invaluable uh, resource and testing um, access to weird signals and pointing out all the things and the ways that I've designed things that might not be very uh, user friendly and things like that. Um, so thank you. I think that's all. So uh, I don't know if we have want to do questions now or later. Okay, Tim. Well, th thank you very much for that. Uh, what I suggest we do, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes till next speaker, is you handle uh, the... In fact, you could take a quick look at uh, those questions now and see if there's any you want to answer live. Have you got those up? Oh, yes, I found them there. <laughs> Yeah, one of the, uh, yeah, some of these, um, yes, I mentioned laminate and CEC control. Um, yeah, that is, that is on the list. Um, uh, small display. Yeah, I've thought about using small display um, or set using both, uh, if some of the options with both, um, uh, both HDMI ports potentially, or use an HDMI port on a, on a, connected display like the the seven inch display and things like that for secondary uh, um, uh, for secondary display so you can have a video separate from the from the details and things like that um, okay I'll tell you what let's let's wind it up there um, but um, I I'm really pleased to see there are some good questions coming up and we'll let you uh, type in the answers to those, Tim. That would be really useful if you could. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, you've done a really good sales pitch because during your lecture, um, we've sold seven each of the uh, push button boards <laughs> and uh, GPIO extenders. So uh, re really good stuff. Um, and really interesting to hear about the work you're doing on the project. And I think it's another example of how uh, so many people can contribute to what the BATC does. You know, we've had uh, multiple testers, we've had multiple people modifying software, we've had people building hardware, um, and uh, it's come come up to be a really good community project. So thanks for uh, all your work on that, and thanks for your presentation, Tim. Thank you, Dave. And we'll look forward to talking to you in the Q&A later.